Hey guys, this is Adam Garcia with Short Stop Studios, and today we're going over the new Ursa Mini. If you haven't heard by now, it's NAB season, and you as a filmmaker should know that a whole bunch of new cameras are going to be getting announced at NAB. The one that everybody seems to be talking about is the Ursa Mini. It seems that everybody has it on their wish list. There's two different cameras, the Ursa Mini 4.6K, and there's the Ursa Mini with the 4K sensor. You can go ahead and put a pre-order in now, but they won't be shipping till July. So today we're going to go over which one should you get. So first I'm going to go over the 4K sensor. This is basically an upgrade from the Blackmagic 4K production camera. You're finally getting 60 frames per second 4K. You're still not getting true 4K 4096 by 2160 but you're a lot closer and you're having to stretch the image less. And you're also getting a lot better ergonomics. You're getting everything you wanted in a Blackmagic camera internally as well as externally. Unfortunately there are some drawbacks to the 60 frames per second but we'll go over that here shortly. One of the biggest upgrades is 60 frames per second. You're finally getting 60 frames per second in a 4K camera from Blackmagic. You still have only 12 stops of dynamic range, but you know, 12 stops is still amazing as compared to like a DSLR camera. Everybody who has a Blackmagic 4K production camera is going to be thinking about going to the Ursa Mini because of the ergonomics. This is a much more handheld friendly camera. You get the handheld grip that you've been wanting just like a C100 or C300 and it also has the shape of a camcorder. It's no longer under that weird rectangular box. So this is something everybody's been wanting from Blackmagic and they're finally giving it to us. Now what I'm really excited about is the 4.6K sensor that Blackmagic has announced. This is a sensor by Blackmagic. It's not an off-shelf sensor like all the other sensors you've been receiving in your other Blackmagic cameras. This was developed by Blackmagic so I am a little weary of the sensor only because chances are for the first three months you're going to be facing some bugs and you're going to have to go through the turmoils of waiting for the first firmware updates, but for them to give you 15 stops of dynamic range and 4.6k resolution in, you know, such a great price package, I'm excited and I'm hopefully going to be upgrading to the Ursa Mini 4.6k. The resolution you're receiving out of the 4.6k sensor is 4608 by 2592. Kind of odd dimensions aspect <laughs> So the, <laughs> I just want to point up here and be like, so this is the resolution. I'll leave and I'll go play Grand Theft Auto. All right, I'll do it. So with the 4.6K sensor out of the Blackmagic Ursa Mini, you're receiving 4608 by 2592 and you're also getting 15 stops of dynamic range. Whereas on the 4K resolution, you're only receiving 4000 by 2160 and you're also getting the standard 12 stops of dynamic range. So is $2000 worth the three stops and extra resolution to you? The only major drawback to the Ursa Mini that everybody is talking about is the choice of storage. Blackmagic decided to go with CF Fast Cards on the Ursa Mini, which are very expensive. They're about $3 a gig. To get a 128 gig CF Fast Card is about $500, versus where you're paying 50 cents a gig with an SSD drive like you get in the production cameras. This means it's going to take a big hit on your wallet. Just to get two cards at 128 gigs each is going to cost you about $1,000, and that's what you're going to need to record in 4K. As far as accessories on the camera, you can also look at the viewfinder, which is $1,500. For me personally, I've been looking at it and I still think a Zakuto would be a cheaper and better solution, but maybe there's some perks that I haven't heard about just because it hasn't been released as yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this viewfinder has to offer for that price point. Also, there's the top handle and shoulder mount edition at $395. I don't think that's a bad price point for that. You get the top handle, you get the shoulder. I mean, that's everything you need to go ahead and make it, you know, a shoulder compatible rig. So 400 bucks, thank you Blackmagic. So I guess the real question isn't whether to buy a Blackmagic Ursa Mini, but which Ursa Mini to buy? So as much as we have enjoyed shooting with the Blackmagic Pocket Camera, and we have done a lot of shoots with it, we are looking forward to going ahead and selling the Pocket Camera and upgrading to the Ursa Mini ourselves. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of this guy and put our pre-order in for the Ursa Mini. So if you'd like, subscribe down below and we'll have reviews coming out as soon as we receive ours. I'm Adam Garcia with Short Stop Studios. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Go shoot some shit.